Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 16. And in this video, we're going to learn about the order of operations. So the lesson objective for today would be to learn how to solve problems with multiple operations involved. Okay, so up to this point, we haven't really discussed any general rules for solving a problem with multiple operations in it. This is what the order of operations is going to do for us. The order of operations tells us which operation to perform in which order when we're faced with a problem that contains multiple operations. So I'm going to read through the order of operations and then we're going to work a bunch of problems. So kind of the first step, or you would say your highest priority when you're working a problem, would be to work inside of any grouping symbols. And then I have a side note here, if multiple grouping symbols are present, you start with the innermost set and work outward. Okay, then the second step, or your second highest priority, would be to perform all exponent operations. Okay, so anything that involves an exponent, you need to do that second. Then third, or your third highest priority, is multiplication and division. Now a lot of students get confused with this. You wanna multiply or divide working left to right. So multiplication does not come before division. Division does not come before multiplication. They are on the same level. You do them from left to right. So if I had something like, four times five divided by two, I would multiply first. So I would do four times five first, and then I would take that result, which is 20, and I would divide by two. So this would be 20 divided by two, which would give us 10, okay? Now, if I kind of flip the order around, let's say we use some different numbers here. Let's say I had 10 divided by two times three. In this case, division occurs to the left of multiplication, so we would now divide first. 10 divided by 2 is 5, is 5, and then we would multiply by 3, giving us 15. So you can see that multiplication and division, again, it's on the same level, it's the same step. We do it working, working left to right. Okay, then your lowest priority, your fourth priority, is addition and subtraction. So I have here add or subtract, again, working from left to right. So addition and subtraction occur on the same level, just as we saw with multiplication and division. So if you have something like four plus three minus one, you would add four plus three first, four plus three is seven, and then you would subtract away one. If I was to switch this around and put a subtraction sign here, an addition sign here, you would now subtract first. Right, because subtraction is to the left of addition. Four minus three is one, then one plus one is two. Okay, so we're gonna start looking at some problems here. And really there's not much to the order of operations other than memorizing what's the priorities. One, two, three, four. And a lot of students will use kind of some clever tricks to remember it. I know that one of them when I was in high school was, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? And you'll hear this all the time you're here. PEMDAS, PEMDAS. But you have to be careful with stuff like this. This is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You have to be careful with this because this is basically parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Remember, these two occur on the same level. And then these two occur on the same level. You have to remember for this step, it's left to right. And I can't stress this enough because I have a lot of students that kind of mess this up because they use things like this and they say, well, no, multiplication comes before division, PEMDAS. Multiplication, division, left to right, left to right. Addition, subtraction, again, left to right, left to right. So if you can't remember that, please take out a pen and a piece of paper, write that down. Multiplication and division are on the same level, we perform them left to right. Addition and subtraction are on the same level, we perform them left to right. Okay, now having said that, let's start on our first problem. And we wanna just evaluate each, which means we're just gonna find the value. So when we look at four minus three plus five, that's our first problem. We have two operations here. We have a subtraction operation and we have an addition operation. So which one are we gonna do first? Again, 
Addition and subtraction occur on the same level. So we're going to work left to right. So I start at the left part of the problem and I go to the right. So 4 minus 3 will be done first. And 4 minus 3 is 1. So I'm going to replace this part right here, this operation, with a 1. And then I'm going to write the rest of the problem. So then plus 5. And then 1 plus 5, I do that. That's 6. Very, very simple. Next, we have 5 times 2 minus 1. So our operations here, we have multiplication and we have subtraction. So multiplication has a higher priority. We need to do that first. So I'm going to do 5 times 2 first. So what is 5 times 2? Let me just highlight this. 5 times 2 is 10. So I'm going to replace this part right here, this operation, with a 10. I'm going to put a 10 there, and then I'm just going to copy what remains. So then I have minus 1, minus 1. And now I'm free to perform that operation. 10 minus 1 is 9. OK, for the next one, we have 4 squared minus 3. And if we look at what we have here, we have an exponent involved, and then we have subtraction. So the exponent has the highest priority. And so we would evaluate 4 squared first. 4 squared means that I have two factors of 4. So 4 times 4, that is 16. So I'm going to replace this with 16. And then we copy what's left from the problem. It's just minus 3. Minus 3. So 16 minus 3 would give me 13. Okay, so now we're going to make them a little bit harder. Up to now, we've only seen things with kind of two operations involved. Now we're going to kind of get into three, four, five, and more operations involved in one problem. So we start out with the quantity 2 plus 1. And again, I say the quantity because 2 plus 1 is inside of a set of parentheses. Then we multiply by 3, then we multiply by 2. Now, the highest priority in any problem is always what's inside of the parentheses. So I would perform this operation before anything else. And where students get confused is they say, oh no, you have addition here. Well, it doesn't matter because when you have parentheses, you must work inside of them first. So we're going to do this first. So what is 2 plus 1? 2 plus 1 is 3. So I'm going to write that over here. I'm basically just replacing this with a 3. And then I copy the rest of the problem. I have times 3 times 2. So I'm just going to work this left to right. 3 times 3 is 9. And then 9 times 2 is 18. So this would be a final answer of 18. OK, now we have 6 plus 8 divided by the quantity 5 minus 1. Again, we have this quantity here, 5 minus 1, because it's inside of parentheses. Right? The 5 minus 1 is inside of parentheses. So we perform whatever operation is inside of parentheses first. So 5 minus 1 is 4. So I'm just going to replace this with a 4 and copy the rest of the problem. So 6 plus 8 divided by, and again, the result of this is 4. So now if we look, we have addition and we have division. So division is a higher priority. Okay, We want to divide before we add. So that means I'm going to do this problem first, which is 8 divided by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. So again, this right here will be replaced with a 2. So I'll have 6 plus 2. 6 plus 2. And to finish this off, 6 plus 2 is 8. OK, for the next problem, we have the quantity 1 plus 1 divided by. And then look, inside of parentheses here, we have something that's a little bit longer than what we're used to. We have 6 minus 2 times 2. So we have two sets of parentheses here. Now here's what really matters. You need to make sure that you perform the operations inside of the parentheses separately from this division. Okay. So in other words, you'll get some result here, and you'll get some result here, and then you're going to perform your division, not before. Okay. That's what those grouping symbols are there for. So let's start out with the set of parentheses on the left. We're going to do 1 plus 1. We all know 1 plus 1 is 2. So we're going to replace this with a 2, and then divide it by, and then inside of parentheses, we have 6 minus 2 times 2. So we're not doing any division yet. We're still working inside of parentheses. Still working inside of parentheses. Now, once you get inside of a set of parentheses, you might have a decision to make. You see how you have subtraction here, and you have multiplication. 
you have to reapply your order of operations. Multiplication occurs before subtraction. It's a higher priority. So we would do 2 times 2 first. Okay, so 2 times 2 we know is 4. So let me just circle this guy. This right here is going to be replaced with a 4. Okay, so equals 2 divided by, and inside of parentheses I'm going to have 6 minus, and the result of this again was 4. And we're still continuing inside of the parentheses, even though we just have one operation left. We want to do 6 minus 4, and that's 2. So we're going to have 2 divided by 2, right, because the result of this is 2. And then we finish this problem up by performing the division. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, for the next one we have the quantity 14 minus 2 then divided by, and here we have a two next to a set of parentheses. So again, that implies multiplication. So two times the quantity five plus one. So we know we're gonna start out by doing the operations inside of parentheses first before we do anything else. So we're gonna start with 14 minus two. 14 minus two is 12. So I'm gonna replace this with a 12. Okay, and I just copied the rest of the problem. Next, we're going to work inside of this set of parentheses here. 5 plus 1 is 6, so I'm going to say this is 12 divided by 2. Then, remember, this implied multiplication, so this will now be times 6, okay? Just because we didn't have a multiplication symbol there, again, you have to remember that as we move higher in math, when you see a number next to a set of parentheses, again, it implies multiplication. So this is our problem now. We have 12 divided by 2 times 6. Remember, if we have division and multiplication, they occur on the same step. So we're going to work them left to right. So that means I'm going to divide 12 by 2 first and then multiply by 6. So 12 divided by 2 is 6 and then times 6. So then 6 times 6 is just 36 and that gives us our final answer. Okay, let's take a look at one final problem. So we have 6 squared minus, and then we have the quantity, 2 plus 3 minus, and then we have another quantity, 3 plus 13, and then finally divided by 4. So again, the highest priority you're going to face in any problem is always going to be what's inside of parentheses. So we have parentheses here, we have parentheses here, and let's figure out what 2 plus 3 is first. So I'm going to rewrite this part, 6 squared minus... 2 plus 3 is 5, so I'm just going to replace this with a 5. And then minus, we have this inside of parentheses, 3 plus 13, and then divided by 4. Now, the next step is to work inside of these parentheses. We're going to do 3 plus 13. So we're going to have 6 squared minus 5 minus, so what is 3 plus 13? That's 16. That's, again, 16 and then divide it by four. Okay, so now when we look at this problem, I have an exponent, I have subtraction, more subtraction, and division. So the exponent is what we're gonna deal with first. That's the highest priority. Six squared is two factors of six, or six times six, which is 36. So again, I just replace this with a 36, and I can copy the rest of the problem. So I have minus five, minus 16, divided by four. Now I have subtraction, more subtraction, and division. Division has the highest priority. So we would do 16 divided by 4 before we do anything else. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So I'd have 36 minus 5 minus, and again, this operation right here resulted in 4. And now I have just straight subtraction, so I'm going to work left to right. 36 minus 5 is 31, so that's 31 right here. And then we have minus 4. And then lastly, 31 minus 4 is 27, and that is our final answer.